Hey, what is going on everyone? It's your boy Tim Freeside, the Bengal Dragon. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons as all your support really helps me remain motivated to continue making a bunch of variety of different types of videos on this channel. And given that we are in Asia Cup season, uh, for all the matches you're going to see a video from me. Alright, now, am I actually going to watch the matches live? No, because most of it conflicts with my own schedule of work and research so no i'm not going to watch the matches live but i'm going to follow the audio commentary uh as much as i can because you know that is something i can do simultaneously anyways so uh today we're going to talk about the first match between sri lanka and afghanistan that took place in dubai and um i don't know what the commentators are on about uh saying that it's a high scoring venue and whatnot like listen dubai has always been a a bowler friendly uh, pitch provided you bowl properly okay there is something in it for the bowlers but if you bowl trash then no matter where you bowl even if you bowl on a minefield you're gonna get hit for you know you know you know for, for like two boundaries every over okay and um, just from watching the highlights and you know covering or catching them the match on audio as much as I can what I figured is that this guy, Fazle Haq Faruqi, the same guy that Tamil Iqbal had uh, some skepticism about and was a bit uh, doubtful about in terms of performing properly, he came and he basically jolted Sri Lanka right then and there at the beginning. Yeah, uh, I think there were like uh, one or two boundaries. But after that, those in-swinging Yorkers and the pace we with which he gets those in swinging yorkers it's kind of reminiscent of 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 wasim akram really like you know especially given the late swing that he gets that's that's the one that beats so many uh, batsmen and also the fact that he can actually move the ball both ways in the air okay and given that this is taking place in abuda or, or in the middle east okay okay the middle east the white ball will swing. Okay, I don't know why Sri Lanka does not know this, or maybe they just, you know, came across the new, uh, like, novelty factor of, of Fazle uh, Faruqi, but they should know that in the Middle East, the, the white ball swings a lot. Okay, so after that, you had Muhammad Nabi, you had... Mujibur Rahman, you had Rashid Khan, and you had Fazle Faruqi, and you had another bowler. Okay, when Fazle Faruqi basically, uh, like, you know, broke the opening stand, the other bowlers, especially Rashid Khan, he kept the dot ball pressure building and building and building to the point where even in the highlights you saw, the batters had no idea what to do. And it's not because Rashid Khan, like, you know, he actually bowls you know just regular leg breaks no he bowls with his variations with a good amount of pace okay he has more variations than um Shahid, someone like Shahid Afridi and this is one of the one of the strengths of Shahid Afridi that he can deliver leg spinning deliveries with some pace so it gives the batters less time to think and to calculate you know what to do and where to hit the ball that pressure allowed for you know people like Muhammad Nabi you know uh, you know and the other bowlers to actually get the wickets because if you see a lot of the wickets they fell as a result of pressure releasing shots and this is something that Afghanistan is very good at doing in, especially like you know as a bowling unit they just need to find just one maybe two more pacers like Karim Jannat is not going to do it Okay, Gulbadin Naib, I think like, you know, he, you know, you know, uh, people, they tried the Gulbadin Naib uh, experiment, it's not going to work. They need someone to compliment Fazle Faruqi and then, you, mark my words, if treated right, Fazle Faruqi and the Afghanistan bowling lineup is going to be the most intimidating bowling lineup in world cricket, especially in like ODIs and T20s. So, you even saw the pressure building, you know, and it led to... A very very silly run out and that just tells you that the batters 
were not even thinking straight. Like, they got so much pressure built on them that it scrambled their thinking. And at that point, I, I knew, you know what, Sri Lanka are not going to win this. Because Sri Lanka is not showing the composure needed to recover from a collapse. So they got a, like a measly total of 105 or something like that, 103, 105. And when Sri Lankans came out to bowl, once again, they didn't know how to bowl on the surface because just look at some of the wides. Like even the keeper had, you know, you know, had a difficult time taking a ball so much down leg side. Okay, the number of extras, the number of wides, the number of bad deliveries. Hazratullah Zazai is someone who scored 150 plus in T20. Do you think you're going to get away with bowling this type of garbage to him? You know, Rahmatullah Gurbaz also did very well. But here I have some issues with, with like Afghanistan. And here they have shown that they're still not that mature as a cricketing nation. Because one of the things that established cricketing nations have is they know how to chase down a small total without losing wickets okay unfortunately they lost two wickets and even in their fielding i believe they they dropped a couple of catches they were they were a bit uh, there are a few instances of of, of misfielding and whatnot and listen it's a t20 game a t20 game you see even 40 year old 41 year old 42 year olds you know play t20 games Okay, so you know it is not that physically taxing on the body. And once again, this is why I am still of the opinion that Ben Stokes, he basically took the coward's way out, you know, you know when he bowed out of ODIs. Because he's just, like, 31. He's, at the, he's not even at the prime of his youth. And his body can't take that? That is just flabbergasting. But anyways... Just over 10 overs, okay? Honestly, a lot of people, like like in one of the li live stream comment section, they said this is going to be over much sooner, but just over 10 overs, it took them to chase down 100 and, like, you know, 105, basically. So, basically, they were going at 10 runs and over. And at one point, I believe after 5 overs, they were like 67 for 0. That just goes to show, like how poorly Sri Lanka batted and yes Afghanistan a lot of their shots involved using their raw power to hit the ball you know take the ball over the fence because a lot of the shots that you saw it got much more height than it got distance and when it got distance with less height the ball rocketed to you know the stands like you know the the, the you know the second floor the third floor of the stands it, you know it just goes to show that like, whoever's going to face Afghanistan, if they connect with the ball, the ball, very likely, it's, you know, you know it, it, it's going out of the ground, either, like, for a four or a six, unless someone gets in the way. Like, you're not going to have those, like, you know, they just, you know, they just uh, go and they, they hit the ball and the ball just rolls and stops. No, no, the Afghanistani uh, batters, they have way too much muscle power for that. Anyways, very poor start from Sri Lanka. Brilliant start from Afghanistan. Let us see what happens in the next match of this group. The next match is, I believe, Afghanistan versus Bangladesh. And believe me, Shakib al Hassan, I'm very sure he was watching this match very, very closely, along with, like, you know, uh, uh, Sridharan Sriram, the new technical uh, uh, consultant, quote unquote, technical consultant, and, uh, like, you know, some of the spinners as well, like, and Jamie Siddons and whatnot. Um, Tomorrow, you know, the big clash, India-Pakistan. If I um, if I can, I will make this video much quicker. But as soon as I see the highlights, I'm going to record the video. Because I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, follow the match on audio commentary. But as soon as I see the highlights, I'm, I'm going to make the video. All right. And uh, let me know what you thought about this match in the comment section below. And as always, hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons. If another video pops up, please do check that out as well. It's your boy, Tanvir Saad, the Bengal Dragon, signing out.